What does it mean to be born again? The answer to this all-important question is found in John chapter 3, where the Lord Jesus uses the term born again twice in this chapter, John 3, 3, and 7. In John chapter 3, Jesus mentions the saving necessity of the spiritual rebirth to Nicodemus, who is a Pharisee and a prominent religious teacher of Israel and notable member of the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. He came to Jesus by night with some questions to ask of the Lord. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Jesus gets right to the heart of the matter by telling Nicodemus that all of sinful mankind needs to be born again to understand, know, and enter the kingdom of God. The term again used after the word born is the Greek word anothen and literally means to be born from above. Thus, to be spiritually born again is a supernatural act of the Holy Spirit from heaven above. We know Jesus is talking about being spiritually born again from heaven above because Nicodemus mistakenly thought Jesus was talking about a physical rebirth when asking Jesus, Can a person enter a second time into his mother's womb? John 3, 4. Jesus answers Nicodemus' question, by pointing out that to be born again is a spiritual rebirth of the person through the power of the Holy Spirit, not a physical rebirth. And he further contrasts it with the fact that a human can only produce physical birth, but only the Holy Spirit can produce a spiritual rebirth. Hence, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. A fallen sinner cannot ever regenerate himself by his own power. He or she needs the operation of God-given faith in Jesus Christ and the sovereign power of the Holy Spirit, who alone has the power to produce spiritual rebirth in the believer's life. On this particular truth, the Bible Knowledge Commentary makes the salient point there are two distinct realms. One is of fallen man, the flesh, and the other is of God, the spirit. A fallen person cannot regenerate himself. He needs a divine operation. Only God's spirit can regenerate a human spirit. Spiritual rebirth, or to be born again by the spirit of God, is not an option if the sinner wants to be saved and go to heaven. Jesus said, the new birth is a universal and indispensable necessity when telling Nicodemus in John 3, 5, you must be born again. And just like physical birth is experienced once, so a person is saved when he or she is only born again once and not over and over again. The new birth is a one-time experience whereby the believer becomes a permanent, regenerated child of God. In John 3, 8, Jesus uses the analogy of the transcendent wind to illustrate the fact the Holy Spirit, like the wind, cannot be controlled, harnessed, or completely understood by men. Though the wind is invisible, its powerful effects are, nevertheless, seen by the observing eye. Likewise, does the invisible, sovereign power of the Holy Spirit produce the visible work of transformation and power in the life of the repentant sinner who is born again. 
Therefore, the work of spiritual rebirth in the life of the repentant believer in Christ cannot be produced by the contrivance and control of man, and neither by a religious ritual act or man-made formula, but is an exclusive and direct supernatural act by the Spirit of God. In John 3.16, the Lord Jesus tells us how a person is born again. It is by believing in Jesus Christ. Indeed, four times in John chapter 3, belief in Jesus Christ is the sole key to being saved and born again. When a person is born again, the moment they truly believe in Jesus Christ, he or she undergoes a radical, spiritual, and moral transformation that changes the way they think, act, and live their lives. Christianity.com is right on the mark here when asserting the following. Being born again is having a change or transformation of the soul and heart by the work of God's Spirit. One soul is the part of our being that consists of three things, the mind or its disposition, emotions, feelings, and our will, what we determine. This spiritual makeover, when we become a born-again Christian, is a change in the way we think, the way we manage our emotions, and choices we make by our will. The transformation of being born again through faith in Jesus Christ will invariably produce a changed life of godliness and obedience to the Lord as evidences of this spiritual rebirth. I refer you to James 2 about that. I will examine the evidence Scripture gives for the born-again life in a later Faith Foundations video. Scripture informs us that the new birth does not come by natural descent, nor the will of fallen man, nor the desire to produce a child, but by the supernatural exercise of God. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. John 1, 12 and 13. Theologians have used the term spiritual regeneration to describe the believer's experience of being born again to mean the reception of eternal life and deliverance from spiritual death and condemnation. Regeneration also brings the creation and implantation of a new nature that is Christ-centered in the believer's life. Through the born-again experience, the saved sinner is a new creation in Christ. This very fact led Paul to declare in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The crucial reason every person must be spiritually born again after physical birth is that every fallen descendant of Adam and Eve are physically born spiritually dead, condemned, and separated from the life of God. See Romans 5 on that point. Hence, the need to be born again. Paul states in Ephesians 2.1 that after spiritual rebirth, Christ has made us alive who were formerly dead in trespasses and sins. This born-again salvation is given as a gift of God's unmerited grace received through faith in Jesus Christ and not by works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Titus 2, 11, and Titus 3, 5. Trusting in Jesus Christ alone for salvation produces the spiritual rebirth and cleansing of God upon the believer's life. Now, going back to uh, John 3, Jesus likens the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit to water in John 3, 5. The water here does not mean water baptism because the Christian church did not exist yet when Jesus told Nicodemus these things. And uh, additionally, water for the cleansing nature of the Holy Spirit was a common symbol in the Old Testament Nicodemus would have been well familiar with. See Ezekiel 36, 24 through 27 and Isaiah 32, 15, and Isaiah 44, 3, 5 on that. The water of John 3, 5 cannot be baptism. That would contradict other biblical passages that clearly teach salvation is by faith alone in Christ alone and not by works. Again, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and Titus 3, 5. The Holy Spirit also uses the Word of God as a means of this spiritual rebirth, according to 1 Peter 1, 23, 
which says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So the power of the Holy Spirit working in tandem with the word of God produces spiritual rebirth through faith in Jesus Christ in the life of the true believer. Let me say that if you're not saved and therefore have not been born again to enter God's kingdom and go to heaven at the rapture or upon death, turn to the crucified risen Savior now. Believe Jesus came to save you from the penal consequences of your sin by dying on the cross for you so that you could be forgiven by God. Repent of your former life of rebellion against God and trust in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ to save you now and forever. Ask the Lord to give you his Holy Spirit to come live in you and make you a born-again believer with a changed life in Jesus Christ. Amen. 